I'm Adam with Productivity Academy, and this video is going to be sharing a little bit about how I'm using several of these tools for my, uh, basically my reading and storing workflow or my personal knowledge management workflow, at least as far as it applies to things like online articles uh, and getting that stuff, uh, highlights, notes, all of that, having that somewhere useful and then acting on that. Uh, so basically it is a reading workflow and adding value to that at each step. And, and, you know, it's about dealing with problem that we all face now on a daily basis, right? Just a huge amount of information that we're coming across. And then how do we keep what we want? Um, how do we add it to our existing information, wherever that may be, whether it's in our head, whether it's in a Evernote or Notion or a database somewhere or a scrapbook, and then how do we make it more useful over time? Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, finding this useful, if you're interested in making more use out of what you come across and also dealing with what you come across on a daily basis, um, you're going to find this useful. Uh, you know, I don't think that you have to say you're a knowledge worker or, um, you know, you do one specific thing. I, I think that, you know, if you deal with digital information and you want to have a better way of dealing with it uh, that adds value for yourself and others over time, this is for you. So also shout out to my friend, Jesse. Uh, who asked for this and we were talking about uh, some stuff related to this and I said, you know, here's the tools I'm using and she's like, man, that'd be cool. If, you know, how do you use this? And I said, well, I should probably actually make a video because it's kind of confusing if you haven't used these tools to just say, well, here's the tools I use and I kind of connect them and then it just works because right there is always more behind that. So I really made this video uh, for Jesse and wanted to share this with you, everyone else who might uh, wonder about the, connecting these tools or just behind the scenes how it works. So. Uh, let's just dive into it. I'm going to show you how I do this. Okay, we're going to start off with Instapaper, and I'll explain why in a minute. But first of all, you know, to get the full usefulness of this workflow, um, you're generally going to have to pay for at least some of these tools. Okay, they're all have, or they all have at least uh, some sort of a free component, that, so you can test them out or a trial. Uh, but to really get the full use of this, you're definitely going to have to pay. I think. Uh, for example, with Instapaper, I think you only get something like five highlights per month, right? Which isn't going to cut it if you want to make this useful. Um, and, it, you know, this is up to you to decide how useful having a workflow like this is. Uh, for me, having the ability to quickly grab articles of interest, mark them up, save them for later, you know, move the highlights and notes to an area where I can incorporate them into bigger ideas uh, is hugely valuable. So paying something like 20 or 25 bucks a month is definitely worth it. But that's personal and that's up to you to decide, you know, which tools are worth it and maybe which aren't. So let's talk about Instapaper. Okay, this has been around for a long time um, and it's dead simple to use. I generally almost exclusively use this on mobile, uh, but am recording the desktop and from time to time I use it at desktop as well. So it comes with a handy little like, Chrome extension. Um, so I, you can just click on this when you're on an article and save it. And then with uh, the mobile apps, when you can just use your sharing uh, button or wherever that may be for you and whatever system you're using. And when you have the Instapaper app installed, it just pops up and you can do that and it just shares, you get a success notification, you go right back to what you're doing. So this allows you to really quickly uh, deal with articles, which is nice because you don't have to read them right then and there, which is really, really important. Okay, so just use it. You highlight what you want. Again, on mobile, it's great. I'm not going to record a video on holding my screen down <laughs> or holding my finger down on the screen and swiping to uh, highlight words. But that's what you want to do is, right, you're highlighting the really important parts of the articles you're going through. You can add notes to those highlights if you want. And anything that you highlight or note will be sent to Readwise once it's connected, okay, which is the second uh, step in this flow. So assuming you want to get... Uh, your highlights somewhere else, you're going to want to check out Readwise and have that connected, which we'll be talking about next. All right. So well, I mentioned this just a minute ago, but really, you know, Instapaper, this functions as your first pass. So you don't have to worry about having too much stuff here, right? Um, and it's good if you don't get to everything. I've got some stuff in here I haven't looked at, you know, stuff where I started to make notes, and that's okay. So feel free to archive too, stuff that has been there for a long time. You can always look at your archives or do a quick search through here. But, you know, to me, it's a sign that, hey, it piqued my interest, but it wasn't really something I needed because clearly if it was, I would have gotten to it. And, but maybe it will be in the future. So I can just archive it. I don't have to delete it, right? I can come back to it. And then as time allows, you could just whip out Instapaper on your phone, go through an article, you can highlight, you can add some notes. And this is great, right? You can do this from time to time instead of, I don't know, playing a game or checking your email uh, constantly. 
So I actually do this a lot of times uh, in the morning while I'm having coffee. And I do find that doing this consistently is good because if you do want to get your highlights somewhere, you've got to make the highlights first. So, you know, maybe getting started with this workflow, uh, you need to set up yourself a, a little reminder just to go in here. But I think with anyone who's looking to set up a workflow like this, that's probably not going to be too important. Okay, so not going to spend too much time on Instapaper. Check it out if you haven't already. So Readwise, okay, this is the kind of, for me the newer one. I've only been using it for about a month, and I signed up, I believe, for a year just a couple weeks ago. Um, this has been really, really helpful. So as you've been highlighting things, if you connected it to Readwise, you're going to start seeing these highlights pop up for review in Readwise. All right, and this is uh, great. That's what it was made for. So let's actually... Uh, go over here and check this out. So again, this is an app that generally I'm using um, on mobile, but uh, for ease of use, we'll just do this here. All right, so I've already done my five of five and you can adjust this. So this is just saying out of all the highlights I have already out across all the articles, all the books that um, I said I wanna have five and uh, done a day. All right, but let's do more. Let's see what's going on here. Um, okay, so we've got a book, Radical Candor, right? It's a book on leadership management. Um, let's see. Okay, this looks pretty good. Just a, a quick review. And what I do here um, is, you know, I'm just looking to see one, this is spaced repetition, right? Because it's grabbing uh, some interesting uh, information from the highlights. But I can also say that sometimes the stuff I highlight, actually, it doesn't make sense for me to review it. So I will discard it. And there's sometimes entire articles or books that are purely referenced for me that I can then uh, go into the settings and set the review period to zero uh, or never. And that's also important. But just uh, to be uh, clear here, you can do several things. You can favorite them. You can keep uh, the highlight and you can discard the highlight. And just a note that has nothing to do with what's going to be passed on to Rome or Evernote or Notion. This is just purely in Readwise. Okay. But just wanted to show you a little bit about this. Uh, I think that this is a, obviously a great tool. It's what it was made for, and they've got more in that. But I just, again, want to focus on, on the workflow. And for me, it's about getting it into Rome where I can do more with it. So I briefly mentioned, uh, let's actually go back here. I briefly mentioned that you, of course, have your highlights. Uh, imported in here, and it could be from articles. Uh, it can also come in from Kindle. Um, this is some really cool features, right? You can um, browse and add popular highlights. So books that either you haven't read or maybe you read the, the physical book, and you could get the highlights that's like the most highlighted things that other people have done. Um, and there's a lot more to Readwise. I, I could not do it justice in this. Again, just want to focus on kind of the workflow here. Uh, but you can also export uh, to Rome, which is what I'm focusing on. But you could do this to Notion or Evernote, depending uh, on what you want to do there. So what is interesting? So this uh, getting the highlights from Readwise, right? Because now Readwise is kind of filled with your highlights and it connects automatically. So I believe Readwise developed it, but Rome just recently has released an API. So maybe changing a little bit. Uh, but you can customize the header, which I'll show you, that goes onto the page in Rome. And I've done some minor changes, and I know some other people have done some similar things. Uh, so let's check that out. Okay, so we come over here, and all I did was click on Rome export uh, in the main menu. And you can do a manual export, but this is what I wanted to talk about. They've got the variables, metadata, and then this is what is uh, getting put in the highlights header. So header text above each of the synced highlights, all right? So, um, and actually this one right here is what is gonna be put into Rome. So let me expand that a little bit. Uh, so these are some things I've added. This I believe was what it came with and you'll get to see exactly what this looks like, but that's nice because I'm gonna add some tags and I also wanna know what the status is, all right? So let's keep moving along. Now, we just went through some of this. I highly encourage you to check out Readwise. Uh, they've been great. Uh, there's so much more. I, again, I can't uh, get into it here because it would take too long, and I don't consider myself you know, an expert on every single uh, bit of this. Their support has been fantastic. Um, again, just check it out. See if that makes sense to you. There's so much this tool can do. I, I, this has been a great find. So uh, let's move on now to Rome. 
Okay, so here we are. This is for anyone who's used Roam. Uh, this is pretty familiar. This is the daily notes. Uh, for anyone who hasn't used Roam, this is what uh, just the blank page looks. And it's actually, if you pull open your uh, sidebar here and you click on daily notes, this is where it starts. So you could add notes here. Uh, and I'm not, again, this isn't, can't go into details on this, but want to show you the basics. So I've arranged this and I'll uh, discuss where I, uh, how I arranged this and why and the people I got the ideas from. Uh, but basically, I go to my inbox of unsorted articles because that's uh, where I can see everything that's been imported by Readwise. Okay, and there's different ways to do this, but I'm just going to focus again on the way I do it uh, and show what's happening here. So I go to inbox, and you can see you could click there and start writing stuff, but you can see these linked references. If you expand these down, you can come in and take a look at you know all sorts of different stuff. Let's take a look at this one: four steps to prepare for quantum. Uh, computing. So it's from Security Boulevard and then Highlights. All right. And this is just what um, Readwise is adding on to there. And um, so we've got this is the information that we were talking about that the header uh, that it puts in there. And so there's no tags, but it is on each of them. I told it to add inbox so that I can go to my inbox and see all of these. So let's hop back over here. Right. That is exactly what I told it to do. All right, so this is great. So now I can come in here, and as time or my interest allows, I go through them to add bolding to the stuff that sticks out. That's really the first pass, all right? There wasn't too much from this one, um, you know, but they just said, okay, let's see. This thread is imminent, available to larger. When quantum computers become available to larger public, um, cyber criminals are likely hoarding. Okay, that's actually of interest to me. So I'm just going to, for example, bold that. And we can see that. And then we can also add direct links in Rome. Okay. I don't believe I have a ton of articles on this, but I could uh, probably, I bet quantum computing is one. So let's see. So I can replace that. That is a bi directional link in Rome. Okay. There's different ways to do this. Again, I'm not going to focus on like a Rome tutorial. Uh, but when we click on that, we will go to quantum computing. Okay, so it looks like just two articles linked, no actual content there yet. Now, this is uh, the just the very first pass and very initial uh, way to go through this. So thanks to, of course, Tiago Forte for this. If you're interested in, you know, the steps of, okay, what should I do the first time I review an article? Things like bolding, highlighting, when should I create a uh, summary? When should I turn it into something else? Um, definitely uh, look at his information on progressive summarization. All right, there's some great information available. Now, once I've done this, you know, in this case, it's a very short example, but I'll go back and update the tags, right? Because I want to actually get a, a good idea because sometimes it's been a day or two or three, maybe longer since I've done this or read the article. So I want to get a good sense of what it is first and I can add any tags that come to mind. Um, in this case, I've already got quantum computing in there, but you know, let's say I hadn't put that direct link in. Um, I could put that in there again. And maybe this also, let's see if security, if I could spell correctly, right? Just adding the tags that make the most sense. Okay. It's up to you to decide. I know there's all sorts of schools of thoughts on this, on how tags should work. Should you use tags? How many tags? Not going to go into that. I find it useful to add a few for myself. Now, what I change here is I always change this once I've done this to pass one. Okay. And if we go over to my sidebar, I've added inbox, pass one, pass two, pass three, and archives to my shortcuts. And the way you do that is just by clicking on the star over here. Okay. Now, once I've done that, if I go back to my inbox, all right, it's decreased by one. It used to say 55, and it's no longer in this list. All right, it's moved over to pass one because that's where I told it. Uh, basically, that's where I put that tag, right? So um, what I've been doing real quick with these, the way I got that idea was Andy Henson. I saw, I believe, a great uh, article it was, which I'll include in the uh, notes below. Uh, but this is a great way to organize this, and I like keeping a little bit of track of how many times I've gone over something. Um, and then just to say that, you know, it doesn't have to go from inbox to pass one to pass two to pass three for archives or two archives for me. Sometimes, um, you know, I just move it to the archive um, if it's just truly archival level information that I found interesting or I thought would be useful in the future, but just don't have the direct need for now. I just don't need it sitting around. And if I already know it's going to be a long time, I'll just go ahead and do that over there. Again, I find that not overthinking things with uh, with this workflow 
works out better than trying to have these like really iron rules. Having just a couple rules in place and being flexible on it and just understanding the kind of general flow makes this uh, much, much easier to deal with. All right, so let's go back in here. Let's say I came back through here and for whatever reason, this has become super important. I could add some highlighting to this, right? So this would be the idea of like progressive summarization where we're coming in oops, and you know, you could come back and say, okay, wow, that is pretty important. I, I've come across this twice and thought it was important. And you know, now it's past two. And you know, things you could do after that, of course, would be, you know, rewriting your own notes. Um, could be turning into something else. Maybe I'm going to incorporate this information as part of an article on quantum <laughs> security that I'm never going to put together, right? I just personally find this interesting and want to have it available uh, for quick reference. And with Rome, the idea being here that you know you can use a lot of these, you can uh, copy uh, this block and add it elsewhere, right? Now that I've got things tagged, I could come in here and do a quick query for things that have to do with uh, quantum computing or security, start pulling this up. Maybe if I was putting an article together, if I was uh, just trying to form my own informed opinion on the subject, right? I could do some quick uh, research in my own material, find what I come across, what notes do I have on it, uh, and very quickly, instead of having to try to keep all this stuff in my head. So uh, the other thing I will talk about briefly with uh, Rome is using a text expander. So I know that a lot of people know what these are and you might've heard of text blaze. Uh, great tool uh, so far, and this is really easy. It works great with Chrome. Uh, there, of course, there's different tools. Use whatever you like. Um, but for things like this, let's say you know maybe you don't want to use some of these tools, uh, but you do want to add notes from books or articles. Um, you can do things like this, where I have a command, um, and obviously it can't clash with the commands in Rome. But I have one that, of course, won't work on screen. There we go. Um, where it does this. I put the title there. I have keywords, author, source. I don't need this so much now, but I developed some of these um, at the beginning or you know, created them in text place so that I could quickly do this here as well as other places if I wanted to store them somewhere. So of course, there are you know just an infinite number of ways you could use um, uh, text plays to create uh, snippets or outlines or templates. Uh, and it's a great way to save just a ton of time. So of course this has applications <laughs> outside of Rome, but this may be something again, if you don't wanna use this full workflow that you find interesting. So um, also I think that there's some great help docs available for both uh, or rather Rome uh, for Readwise and Instapaper. Uh, but you know, my advice is just to try it out and don't think too hard about it. Do what you want and then solve the problems when they come up, not before. And if you do come up with some issues, you know, of course you can reach uh, different support teams, but also check out YouTube, okay? I mean, you might be watching this there, uh, but also there's, especially with Rome, uh, there's some great series out there on the details and really going into depth on you know, what is a, a block reference? How does this stuff work? You know, learning the details to really make it uh, customized and work for you some amazing series out there. So hopefully you found this helpful as far as a workflow using Instapaper, Readwise, and Roam. Uh, and if you have any advice, any comments, any questions, by all means, uh, please leave them as a comment, get in touch with me. And uh, again, hats off and thanks to everyone that I've learned from uh, Tiago Forte, uh, Andy Henson's uh, article on his workflow, as well as so many others.